everybody as I'll ever be. I'm just getting this plugged in. It'll only take a second, though. It helps if you plug it in. <laughs> no signal. Okay, it's uh, 7.05, I'll call, the order, call to order this meeting of the Middlebury Development Review Board for Monday, November 14th, 2000, 2016. Um, the only item on the business agenda tonight is an application by Jim Daniel representing the Raymond A. Daniel Trust for final approval of a two-lot subdivision located at 189 Birchard Park in the high-density residential zone. Um, I'll remind the public that if uh, you want to be considered an, an interested party, uh, you will have to um, sign in and also uh, have questions or concerns during the public hearing that we have for the application. Um, Okay, uh, the first uh, item is a, um, are there any public communications on any item that is not on the agenda tonight? Hearing none. Uh, the next item will be the approval of the minutes, which I don't think we can do because we're missing um, David or John. So we'll uh, postpone that. So we'll get right to the first business application. Um, an application by Jim Daniel representing the Raymond A. Daniel Trust for a final approval of a two lot subdivision. The property located at 189 Birchard Park in the HDR zone. And the first thing we'll do is uh, administer an oath for the applicant and interested persons. I affirm that the evidence and information I am giving in this proceeding is true and accurate to the best of my knowledge and belief. Okay. All right, Jim, would you like to come up and give us a brief outline of what the proposal is? Okay, well, the proposal is um, in my father's trust. It was uh, depicted a lot line to be drawn on the pro existing property to make the eight point whatever acres it is existing right now into two separate lots of a two acre homestead with for the house and the remainder to be in another parcel okay and um, i i have brought to you um, a survey already done by Donna Johnston it has been already pegged um, I have the mylar in hand so if it is approved tonight it's able to be signed off on and we can uh, file it okay um, both the exist uh, both the the two new lots are both served by both municipal sewer and water yes sir yeah. and you're not proposing any building at this no. time no sir <coughs> Any questions or comments from <coughs> the board at this point? A lot one has a house on it, and the others. Yeah, one's the pre-existing house that was my dad's all along, mom and dad's, and then then it was a it was a field. Mm -hmm. So all there is is just a, a line adjustment to make it two separate parcels still remaining as trust property. Mm -hmm. So lot two could again be subdivided? I believe by um, Middlebury standards it could, yes. Yep. And you're not proposing any new outdoor lighting, um, any landscaping, screening? I'm not screening proposing screening. anything. I'm doing a lot line adjustment as per... Um, Okay. My okay. directive in the trust right. as the trustee. I just wanted it to be on the record. Yes. 
I was up around there today, and there's some uh, some clearing of woods up along the. Yeah, that's a whole different property that has no bearing on this. That, or that has no bearing on this. Okay, okay. that isn't nope. included in this. No, sir. Okay. Is there another house um, beyond the one that was through all the stuff? Uh, there are two properties okay. beyond that road, yes. Jen, do you have anything at this point? I was just going to point out to the board that that kind of shows a little bit of the history of the property. So there's a house probably being built on this one now. No, it's not yet. Oh, not yet? No. Okay. But there's a permit out for a house to be built here. And then there's this one. There's a piece down here. So now we're talking about this being carved separately from this one. So the regulations say that um, for a new lot, a new building lot, you're supposed to show a building envelope on the survey. But I guess if you're not building on it, then it's not a building lot. Generally, if it's not a building lot, then then we would say that you had a something in the deed, you know, that protected it and said that it was going to be open space. So it sounds like it's something in between. Um, the reason why a building envelope would be nice on this is because there are wetlands. You can see here if there's so many wetlands on the there property. There are no wetlands in, on that property. You could go out and investigate wherever you'd like to see on the property, and there are no wetlands. It's it's continually HDR uh -huh. on the property. Yeah. Yeah, when I what, drove up around there, I it is, there is no wetland on that property. I didn't see any indication of any wetlands. You can't confusing. tell wetlands from looking at it. You know, you gotta, you yes, gotta have you a can. soil. You gotta have a soil. That's, how, that's how they analyze it. They go and look at of what the grass is and what. I know how they else. analyze it. Yeah. They look at the grass and they look at the vegetation, but they also take a little shovel with them and oh. they dig up the soil and they look and see if it's hydric soils. So you can have a forested wetland that looks like a forest and it's still a wetland technically. Uh -huh. And in this town, we, put, we protect class three wetlands as well as the class two and one protected by the state. So the only reason I would say a building envelope might be nice on the final plot is to make sure that a future building permit didn't plunk a house in the middle of a wetland. But then again, if Victor and I are doing our jobs, we shouldn't let that happen anyway, so. Well, if he comes in and wants to develop lot two, um, I mean, he could, he could, since it's high density residential, residential and it's 10,000 square feet per unit. I mean, he, he could build a, you know, a multi-story or multi-unit development in there on a small. <clears throat> so to do that, he'd have to come back to the board? Yes, yes. And then we'd have him hire somebody to delineate the wetlands. But yes, well. I'm thinking well, of a scenario where he doesn't do that and, like, maybe just sells the lot and maybe somebody just builds a house there. And then, you know, then the onus is going to be on whoever purchases that lot to delineate the wetlands. And figure out where the building envelope should be. So, yeah. Is there also a concern that um, a building closer to the point of the triangle could be in that lines? So, lot one. In lot one, which is the existing house with the proposed boundary up to the corner, making it such a triangle. Um, yeah, I guess so. If he were to, if he were to build a second house in the same lot, that seems you, unlikely. You can't because of the zoning setbacks and all that mm. from the from the from the borders. There's there's not enough property there to be able to. Um, to satisfy the setback. Satisfy the setback requirements yeah. that the town requires. So it's always unusual. It's always a little awkward to get a subdivision where where there's no real definite plans for what's left over. And so then we just have to think about how to deal with that. And you can have them show a building envelope that, that went right around the wetlands that we're showing here if you wanted. Or we could just say, you know, in the decision, we could say any future development of lot two would require. Well, I think that's, that's the, the easiest way to do it because he doesn't have any idea at this point no, sir. Of, of what he wants to, how he wants to develop. Mm -hmm. He may just sell it for one single, family dwelling or so I, I think we can cover that in um, in the order that okay. if he wants to develop it he, he would come back with a plan to develop it however way he he, he thinks he can that's what I would suggest anyway. Is this shading already the delineated wetlands? That's what our maps show, and our maps include like vernal pools and class three wetlands, and um, our data is also really old and wetlands move. So I mean, you could be completely right. Maybe they're dried up by now, or maybe they were never a I class see. two. Maybe they were just a seasonal wetland. So 
So then the any developer of Lot 2 would have the burden of um, investigating the wetlands? Not if all they do is build a single family house. See, see what I mean? Like if you leave that much left over and you don't say, you don't say where the building envelope is on this plat, then that could be just be sold as a house, a house lot for a single house. And then they would come in and get a building permit. And for a building permit, I can't really require a wetland delineation. And I'm going to be, I'm going to be arguing with the builder about where they put the house because there's no, you know, there's no delineated, um, what's it called, building envelope where I can say, look, this was the building envelope that was approved by the DRB. This is where the house should go. There's going to be this whole battle on our end if it's sold for one person. If it's a subdivision and they're going to like create several house lots out of it, then it would come back to this board and we can discuss it as a board. You could put, you could put a condition in the decision that if that is sold in the future, then it, the building permit wouldn't be issued administratively and it would have to come back to the board. You want to do that? Yeah, well, yeah. I guess that would make sense. That, would I mean, be the, that way, he doesn't have to bear the cost now of figuring out the wetland question. But which may have moved by the time. Yeah. That's building. <clears throat> but then I, I wouldn't be having to make all these decisions on my own when I issue the building permit. I can, quite frankly, we can take anything that we want and and refer it to the board anyway. But it'd be nice if it was in the condition of the uh, condition of the approval, I guess. So now, would that would that be a standard procedure for any subdivision that isn't proposing a building at this time? I mean, somebody can come in and you know, want to subdivide, uh, you know, 100 acres into three parcels with with no intention of building right now. So would that would is that what you would do normally? <clears throat> Normally, Section 571V of the regulations says that when you create a building lot, you have to show a building envelope on the um, final plat. And so this final plat doesn't show a building envelope. Either that, or you could create some sort of, you know, because some people actually carve off um, lots to be open space forever. They're going to sell it to a farmer. They have absolutely no intention of building on that in the future. So then they would have something in their deed that said that there was a conservation easement on it, or this was designated open space not to be developed. So that's what we would normally do is either require the building envelope now. I mean, I don't know what you would normally do because we haven't done this together yet. Yeah, well, it, yeah, we haven't done it like. I'm telling you what Jennifer would normally yeah. do. Like, yeah, okay. Well, I'm, I would, it, it's, yeah, I don't, I don't remember us doing it this way, but mm -hmm. that isn't to say it's not a good way to do it. Um, I'm just, now, if, if, for instance, he did have a building envelope proposed, would that confine him if in the future he wanted to do something different and he could prove that a certain amount of this is not in the wetlands? You could always have the decision amended and he could come and show you an amended um, building envelope. Okay. But if we just that, do it that's the point of the building without envelope. one now and just subdivide the lot and then just put it in wherever when it's time, to, say too, when it's time to build come back to the board so we can just make sure we put it in the right spot. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't have to worry about any of it. Thank you. That's the simplest thing that needs to be able to occur. Okay. Um, any other questions from the board at this time? Are there any comments or questions from the public at this time? Is from 15 years ago and it's, or it's like so it's first of all if you're listening no one's telling you that you can't do anything tonight so but if we were to say that you weren't able to do it then um then we would have you hire the wetland scientist to prove that the that those aren't wetlands there i mean the onus is always on the applicant to prove otherwise so this is what our mapping shows the risk that was outlined was that once a subdivision is granted if only one house was to be built on that lot number two, then in theory, Jennifer would ordinarily approve that and the wetlands issue wouldn't come up. But the wetlands issue is supposed to be handled when there is a subdivision, which is what we're doing now. 
So we either require the wetlands to be dealt with now, or we make a condition that we at least think about it down the road. Does that make sense to you? Any other comments or questions? <coughs> I'm neighbor to this, and we are neighbors to this. Okay. Could you state your name, please? Uh, Tom, <coughs> excuse me, Tom Dickinson. Okay, thank you. And we are neighbors. Uh, I did not come in to look at the documentation. I didn't realize it until it was too late to, uh, to do that. Uh, is that available for examination in the future? Because I'm curious as to what is proposed. And with the, the, uh, the maps and so on. Yes, it's, a, it's available. Um, I don't know if we can show you. You're talking about the map itself? Oh, the plot plan. I mean, I see a plot plan and then I see a, a, a what do you call that? A, an aerial view. Okay. Well, we, we have a, a subdivision plat that shows the, the, the large lot being um, uh, divided in two. And the lot, lot one is where the existing uh, homestead is. Or lot one, and lot two is going to be the vacant lot at this point. Right. And then on the uh, west side is uh, supposed to be, to be broken off or be separated from lot two? Not at this time. She said no. I'm not sure. Where, I'm not sure uh, if I understand his question. No, on the west side. The west. On the west side is uh, James D. That's, yeah. that's not part of that. That's not under consideration. No. Today. Okay. But that's already been subdivided. So everything is staying the same as it is now, except that there will be a legal line between ah, on the land that's there now. Between lot one and lot two. Yes. Right. Okay. Okay. Any other questions at this point? Okay. Is that your son on that lot? Yep. Who has the fire pit? Me. Okay, that's yours as well. Yes, sir. No, that's that is on lot two. Okay. I am the trustee of the trust, and I am right. leasing the property from the trust. So I create, you know, so I have the right to um, to put a sun tracker on the property, which has no bearing on this hearing. No. No, no. Any other questions from the board at this time? Is there a motion? I can make the motion. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, I move that the Middlebury Development Review Board, having reviewed the application submitted and having heard and duly considered the testimony presented at the public hearing of November 14, 2016, approve this request for a two lot subdivision of parcel 8170B located at 189 Birchard Park subject to the condition that any uh, proposed building of residences on lot two in the future be referred back to the development review board. Is there a second to that motion? No, second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion on the motion? All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. So now tonight, does this get signed so it can be properly executed with um, 
with Jennifer so it can be properly recorded because that's what uh, mm -hmm. the trust attorney said needs to occur. Is there a signature block on it? I, gosh, I haven't taken it out. It wasn't of the box. on my draft. Uh, this is this is the actual mylar, so I don't know if there is or not. It should be a signature block for the clerk and also one for the board. Um, I cannot tell you where it would be. It does not appear. Do we have a stamp? No. We don't. No. We could order one, I guess. Boy, I hate to, I hate to, to change somebody else's survey though or stamp something. On. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I guess I'd be right. Can we just say? Uh, you could write it in, I guess. Town clerk. Share the development. Yeah. 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 It's a block. To, okay. Uh, so, do you want me to have Donald Johnston deviate this drawing so there's a the, the formal nature. spot for you guys to sign off on it, or is it really that detrimental that it is to be I'll that? Leave correct? that up to, to these guys. I don't. I'm not making any decisions here. Uh, he can add it just. Yeah, you know, I'm looking at a time frame where I don't want it to go this to go weeks where like tonight this this could be recorded and as done because it's all approved. So it's just I need to, you know, yeah. have this process done. So, you know, at, if you can approve the drawing as is, so this can be recorded with the second one coming in with your signature your signatory areas, um, that would be that would be okay with me for that time frame. So they've just taken a vote that approves it. So if you just want to have him drop a new mylar and drop it off, then Kevin's always real good about coming in the office and signing it. Okay. Because the clerk will need to sign it too, and then it, it records the book and yep. page. Yep. He'll, it's a standard thing totally that understand. surveyors usually yep. use. Okay. If there's any questions, he can call us, but he should yep. use it all the time. Right. And that's why none of the surveyors down here ever <laughs> include the block for the board. Well, they, they always remember the clerk block, but they never remember the board block. So that one doesn't have the clerk block either. This doesn't have any block, yeah. just himself. So, but, but you, you want it when he does, You want both mm -hmm. clerk and. Could you email me that so I can forward it to him with the request, sir, please? Definitely. And then that way um, he can have it in writing to know it has to be properly executed. So it's properly executed. You want to leave that mylar with. I w if then that then if that's what you find a stamp. <laughs> we can oh, I don't have a stamp. We used it. to have one. I, I agree. I yeah, no, we used to. Have don't, don't leave that with me. I don't have the stamp. Probably so. got over in storage. Probably so. Fred threw it out. <laughs> so can you do that one uh, uh, tomorrow? Just mm -hmm. it's not your. It's your wife's name, right? Sonia. Yeah. Yeah, because it, the mylar is a subdivision. If it's not signed, there's no subdivision. Right. No matter what the, what's in the minutes. Okay. Right, it has to be signed. You just can't take a marker and sign it. In this case, if it had the clerk's block, I would say we could just write it in, but the clerk's going to need so, that. So, so at this point, it is approved pending mm -hmm. a properly executed mylar. Mm -hmm. It's been approved, and we have to write up the decision, and the decision will be signed too. Okay. And after the decision, there's like a 30 day appeal period. Yep. Yeah, I've seen that where the mile hour was assigned, and usually it can be uh, figured out. But uh, I know of one in New Haven that was assigned, uh, the house couldn't be sold. Right. In a subdivision. If it's not signed and recorded within 180 that, days. That's uh, that was a uh, one over on uh, Pablo Road, which was part of the development was in Middlebury, and part was in New Haven. Mm hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yep. See you later. Thanks. Have a good night. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the clerk. Yeah, so that check is for the clerk. He's already prepaid us for the recording. Okay. And I told him I would take it over to the clerk after I got signed. Right. Have a nice night. See you. See you later. So I can just leave that with you. Mm -hmm. Um, <clears throat> can I ask some? All right, go ahead. Uh, deliberative session. Uh, we aren't going to do that. Other business. We have other business. We have, have other business. I'd like. I wasn't here for the last meeting on the uh, 
non-conforming issue that came up and I guess I wanted to see if we could talk about that at some point and see oh oh the cross of your call yeah sure? yeah I just I'd like to uh, we don't have to do it on the record. I mean, we can just discuss it afterwards if you want. Okay. You want to adjourn then? I, I wrote myself a summary, which, because um, I, I couldn't just tell you even now. So if I read this, everyone else can tell me if it's correct. Okay. No, I should or not. Tell us. You want to adjourn? We'll adjourn the meeting. Is there a motion to adjourn? Yeah. yeah. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Meetings adjourned. We're all done, Kathy.